Welcome back to the bench. We're playing with the rusty icon again. The object in front of you is the sensor unit. And uh, let's see, I'll zoom back and I'll give you a, a little bit of background of what I think I know out of this schematic of the sensor unit. And what we know so far is that we think our LEDs are putting out the correct amount of, or at least some amount of light because they're drawing current. Uh, and we have a good and a bad uh, receiver, IR receiver. These seem to be a transistor uh, receiver and we have the replacement parts in the mail that, that arrived, so we're going to try that. We also have a PC board diagram that doesn't exactly match. And uh, if you look at this diagram like this, and you notice that here's the cathode of the diodes. This appears to be ground. And that goes back to here, which I also believe is ground. And here is where the voltage comes in. And you can see that travels around to here on the bottom. Now, if we look at the uh, subject of our activity here, you can see that the power on this one appears to go around this side, not the bottom. So I believe this diagram is from the other side of the board which I guess makes sense if you are looking at manufacturing drawings. So what we're going to try to do is take this out, first of all, of the whole metal sensor unit. And then second, uh, these are the receivers right here. And you can see again, if I slide this in, that they are sitting like this. So that would mean we would see them in reverse because we're looking at the wrong side of the board but at least the emitters appear to be <laughs> going in the same direction so the parts are m mounted in the same way which makes sense and i think uh, this this area here i think is supposed to be the lens part obviously so we can see that on the part so i'll show you those those came in the mail, and they are here. And they came from these people at uh, cs at orangeconnects.com. And they are here. And you can see they are, if I get them apart, little three-terminal devices. And you can see what appears to be I think that appears to me anyway. Let's see if I can get some of the plastic away from it. That appears to be some kind of lens on this side, maybe. And just a blank back on the other side. So I think we know which side to face forward toward the infrared diodes. So I think we're going to... We've got the hot all heated up here. And... Uh, I think we're going to go for the gusto. So let's carefully take that out and see if we can lift it straight up and uh, avoid any damage to that rotor. That worked. I need my bucket here. I don't have it. All right, here goes number two. came out. All right now I think if we lift this straight up we should avoid any damage. All right and there's our guy. Those look strangely like I got the right part don't they? So Q1 and Q2. Now let's look and see if Q1 and Q2. I'll zoom back here. Oops I'll zoom up first. All right let's look and see if Q1 and Q2 you can see if I put that closer, you can see Q2 on the left, and there's Q2 on the left. So it is indeed the top of the diagram. And DS2 and DS1 line up. And we know from this picture that uh, Q2 is bad and Q1 is good from our previous measurements. So Q2 is on the blue wire. And we can see that over here. So Q2 
is on the right side now and is on the left side here. So it really is Q2. So I think we can go ahead and pull that out. And you can see my uh, red wire is dangling in the breeze, so I took that back up. And wouldn't that be the crime? No, it can't be the crime because one half worked. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take the sensor unit out, set that aside in a nice spot away from harm's way. With, you know, I think the hawker was just too big. I'm going to go ahead and stop because I can't do this with the camera in front of me. We'll come back and hopefully I'll have those cleaned off and I'll show you what the joints look like. So just a moment. Okay, here's a handheld attempt at filming what I think is the, bu the bug. So we changed Q2, which gave us back signals on the blue and the yellow lead, which are the raw output and then the Schmidt trigger output. But then after that, Q1 was appearing not to put anything out on either its green and the orange outputs, which are the left side as you're looking at it now. And if you look at this, I'll see if I get, it's hard to get this zoomed in to show you. So the board's pretty ugly and maybe so is my soldering, but let's see if I can show you. Uh, here we go. So I replaced the transistor, which is this lead, this lead, and this lead. And if you look, it looks like this lead and this lead are soldered pretty well, but I think in the heat, whoops, pardon me, in the heat of the operation, it looks to me like uh, this lead coming from Q1 is no longer soldered to the board. So I'm going to fix that joint and see if that gets us back into the action. So uh, thanks for watching this brief interlude. Okay, we're back on the bench with the rusty Icon 735. And so that was exactly the problem. So when I sucked the solder clean on transistor Q2, which is in our picture here, this was our bad one. So when I sucked the solder clean on the common lead between these two, right there, let's see, I had sucked a lot solder off of Q1 as well. So now with Q1 resoldered, you can see we're tuning again. So the rusty ICOM 735 will get a knob next. And the next time I film something, I'll be tuning with the main tuning knob. So the replacement of the one bad infrared receiver was the, the correct fix. And we're back on the road again. So thanks for watching. This is a I'll try to edit it down so it won't be too long, but it's a, a good final result anyway. So thanks for watching. Oh, extra credit for getting the call sign of the station. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya. Okay, I've gone ahead and put the knob on the front and uh, not everything is connected. The PA is not connected yet, but we're enough to try it out. So we've got a front panel knob and uh, here we go. So I think the uh, rusty icon is coming alive here. So now I've got to see if I actually have an RIT knob. I don't know if I do or not. And I'll get some screws put back in it. I do have to go in through gilt and <laughs> touch up the solder joints on that filter that we put in the other night uh, when I should have been asleep. And then after that, I'll put the covers on and we'll give this thing a shot. Thanks for watching.